Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Michael Brenholt, and in today's video, I want to show you how to use the custom groups features within the Insight software program. But before we begin, please take a moment to click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Okay, let's get started. I have selected the training file cylinder for this demonstration video. From there, after you've selected a part and set up the modeler setup to look the way you would like for the parts you want to process, come down and start by only slicing the part. Once you slice the part, come over here to the left hand side and click on the tool paths tab and select the custom groups. Once you do that, come back over here to the right hand side and select new custom groups. Now when this window opens, keep in mind that no matter what you have done to a part previous to this point, custom groups is starting off of a baseline of assuming everything is solid. So you are going from solid to something else. So in this case, let's start off by giving a group name. Contours and rasters. After we give it a group name, the next one down is the display color. What is this for? Clicking on this icon, you can see a range of different colors. You can select one or let the software assign it for you. What this does is as we change things within a slice file, it allows you or anyone else following behind you to clearly see what has been modified within that part. Moving down, we're going to leave the toolpath material as model. Contour style. Well, it's already single as the norm, so we're going to change it to multiples. When you do that, I can change the contour width. Now keep in mind that this width, if I click this drop down, is set currently between 16 thousandths and 34. That is based on the tips we assigned when we selected the modeler setup to begin this. So this range will change depending on the tips that you originally picked. Number of contours. Again, it's assigned as one. You can click this drop down and either select one of these or you could come in and say, well, I would like to do seven and select enter. But in this case, we're going to just start off by doing three. Now, once we've done that, we're going to stop there. We're going to come down and click on the green check mark. That is what we want to do for this custom group. We haven't assigned it to anything yet. So let's come up here and go to a top view. And then we're going to go over to our left and we're going to select on the top layer. Now, once we do that, we're going to run a toolpath for the entire part, just so we have some visuals to baseline off of. You can see that it has a single contour and a normal raster fill. And again, as a reference, these green lines represent the center of where the tip is going to follow through the part build. We will then come over here and by left clicking and dragging, we're going to select a given layer to modify. Now, if I were to go to an isometric view and I were to come over here and show you all layers, you can see that we're only modifying the top layer of the part. Going back to a top view, we'll come over and we will add that given layer to our custom group. Changes to magenta. These icons, we will then either do a toolpath for a single layer or a group of layers. Well, in this case, we'll just do the single layer we've modified. Now notice, we now have three contours on the outside, but nothing else has changed. Great. Well, what if we wanted to modify this? We can come over to the modify button, click on that, and come down and do some more changes to our contours. Well, let's just look at the next group, contour controls. I can apply a contour to a selected feature only within a part. Or in this case, the one we're going to select is linking contours. Linking contours really helps to add a tougher skin to the outside of the part. So if I were to come down here and I were to green check mark this, Currently, the part starts here, runs a contour around, stops, goes in, runs a contour around. So you basically have a seam, a break point, if you will, within the contours. By linking them and coming over here and clicking on the Z again to run a toolpath, you can now see that we've got a new little collection of green lines here. Well, what do these mean? Well, the tip now starts here, runs all the way around, comes back and jogs down and continues on. These three contours are linked together, creating a stronger contour or a better wall on the outside of your part. Going to a top view. Wow, that's great. Well, what else can we do here? Well, if we were to stop over and we were to right click and we were to select shade toolpath, 
Shading actually shows you how the infill is going to look in the part. Now currently we have a solid fill on these rasters. Well, if I come over here to the modify and I say, well, let's move down to the next group, the air gaps. Air gaps between adjacent rasters, between contours and rasters, or contour to contour. Well, in this case, we're going to modify the adjacent rasters. Why would you do this? Well, let's come down and select five thousands. I would do this case in point for, let's say, polycarbonate material. Polycarbonate builds really hot. And if you were to build a one inch cube within the polycarbonate material, it would actually be a little larger than one inches because the material expands within the part build. But if I created a little air gap between the rasters, doesn't really change the structural properties of my part, but by green check marking this and coming over here and clicking on my Z, I now have a little breathing point between my rasters so that when I build this part, the polycarbonate won't swell and make the part larger. Now, what does this look like if I were to page down one layer? You can see solid, page back up, small air gap. Okay, one more modification, coming back to modify again. If I were to skip up here to the infill parameters, we're going to skip this drop down, which is going to be the same as the sparse fill controls in a moment, and we're going to go to the next one, raster width. Again, this is the same as the tips that you had selected for the contours. Within this range though, let's say I also wanted to speed up my build. Well, if I came down and selected the 34 thousandths, it's not going to change how my part looks, but because it's extruding more material, increasing the width, it speeds up slightly, but it still speeds up my build. If I were to say do a 34 thousandths, green check mark it, again come back over here to the right, click on my Z, now my tool paths are even larger, so that as I look at this, this layer will build a little bit faster than the layer below it because this layer has smaller tool paths and there's more material being built within it. So those are some quick modifications on a Gibbon layer. Well, let's move on to a new custom group. Again, if I create a new custom group, and in this one we're going to call Sparse Fill. Under Sparse Fill, you can notice it automatically assigned a new color for me. Great. Now we are not going to modify any of these other parameters at this point in time. By the way, the infill angle, this can be used to create a little more strength within your part by changing your start or delta angle instead of using the normal 45 or 90. Skipping down to sparse fill controls, if I click on the sparse fill control, if I were to say, you know what, I really want to create a hexagonal fill within my part, click on hexagonal fill. I will then say, okay, green check mark that. Let's come back out here and go to the bottom of our part. We could page up here and say, let's just say we wanted to start on layer 10 and make that the bottom, clicking on this icon here, bottom of the range of layers I want to modify. And then I can either come in here and say, I'd like to go to layer 20, or you can highlight it and say 20 or 30, put in the number you would like, make that the range top. So clicking on the range top, I now come over here and click on the view range of layers. After I've clicked on the view range of layers, I can then come over here, click on an isometric view, and I can see the layers that I want to modify. If I again left click and drag, I can highlight that range of layers, come over here and add them, and then run a toolpath. Now for the group of layers that I've modified, I now have a hexagonal fill going back to a top view, looking straight down on the part, if I page up, there's my solid, page down, I now have a hexagonal fill within that part. Let's just say, okay, I love the hexagonal fill, but I want to modify it back to a normal sparse. Easy. Click on modify. Come over here and say, I want to create an alternating rasters. It will then open up these opportunities to change my start or delta angle if I wanted to, change my width. But again, we'll leave it simple for right now. Click on the green check mark rerun a tool path with a group, and just that fast we've modified it again. So if, after all of that, we wanted to create another custom group, if we clicked on new, you can see that it gives you yet another new color, and we can then come back through and modify more parameters for different features within the part to create different strength properties within our build. Finally, as an overview, once you've made all the changes you would like within the custom group's features, I'm going to click on the screen check mark, come up here to the top, and I will select the isometric view. I'm going to then go over and show all layers just to give you an overview of what you've done. 
In this case, the magenta signifies the contours and rasters that we modified, the red is the area we haven't touched, and the cyan is the sparse fill. Once you've completed all the changes you would like within custom groups for your part, come back over here to the right hand side, click on these double arrows, go back to the modeler setup page, run a support structure, then create a tool path for both your model and support material, and then file, save as a job, you're ready to build. So there you have it. There's a quick overview of the custom groups features within the Insight software program. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at GoEngineer.com, and thanks again for spending a little bit of time with me today. Bye.